Hi, my name is Dr. Alexa Parker, and I have a, a doctorate degree in chiropractic. I've been practicing for nine years now, and I've studied uh, functional blood chemistry, functional endocrinology, and functional neurotransmitters, as well as functional thyroid under Dr. Dutiz Karazian. Uh, Dr. Karazian recently wrote a book. It says, Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal? And basically, it, it, this is a really functional approach to determine if someone has an underlying uh, functional health condition. Also, um, I have over 250 hours um, of childhood neurobehavioral training through the Carrick Institute. Uh, I work specifically with children that have ADHD and autism um, and really work on um, helping them with their brain imbalances. I have also have a bachelor's degree in nutrition and generally most of the types of problems or a lot of the types of problems I work with are chronic conditions and what we found is that a lot of these chronic conditions have several common threads. Uh, we work to really help people metabolically as well as functionally in order to help them function at a much better rate here. So what we found is that a condition such as fibromyalgia, vertigo, chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, stenosis, hyper and hypothyroid, irritable bowel syndrome, GERD, insomnia, digestive disorders, a lot of these conditions have some chronic, some common threads. One of them being oxygen deficiencies. Um, oxygen deficiencies can occur um, oftentimes when, because these patients cannot move as well as they once could. Therefore, um, the cerebellum, which is the most oxygen-rich area in your brain, is oxygen-dependent, uh, actually oxygen-dependent area of your brain. Um, it can actually affect the ability to uptake oxygen because the patients aren't able to move as well due to their chronic pain or chronic fatigue. Um, neurological misfiring. We find that you know generally we have a right and a left hemisphere of the brain and what can happen is we can actually have brain imbalances where one side can be weaker and one side can be much stronger. Also metabolic imbalances, things like blood sugar, cortisol, um, blood sugar problems. Many of you, you know, you may have had your glucose done, your blood sugar checked, you know, at a, at a specific lab um, and, and told that your lab range was normal. Well, what we, what we have now, what we now understand that is actually functional ranges of what a normal, healthy, functioning person should be. And for example, for glucose, um, a functional range is between 85 and 100. If you go to a lab, um, actually they use um, lab values based on the population and people that have been to that lab for the, per for the past year. So when your doctor generally has labs drawn on you, they have them done um, and they, they actually use you know, a range that's much broader or wider than the one that I use. So for example, a normal lab for that, a range for glucose for them would be between 65 and 125. So we know that um, what is healthy for a healthy individual is between 85 and 100. So therefore, we run specific labs to determine if someone is having, for example, a condition like hypoglycemic episodes or insulin resistant episodes. Um, most people in, our, in this culture in, in the US are generally having, if they're ill or are experiencing symptoms, they generally can have a lot of fluctuations in their blood sugar. So for example, if you're getting you know, fatigued really easily or shaky or jittery between meals, or if you're falling asleep you know, right after you eat, that it can be an indicator that you have an underlying blood sugar issue. Um, cortisol, most people in society have some degree of stress whether it's driving in traffic, whether it's the foods that you eat, for example, foods that you're sensitive to, caffeine and stimulants, all of those things can actually cause our adrenal glands, which sit on our kidneys, to over or produce too much cortisol. That cortisol can then have an effect on our gut barrier and our brain barrier. And it can affect, um, it can affect our, our gut, our ability to actually produce normal enzymes to break down our food. It can break down the barrier systems. In which case, in our gut, we have an immune barrier in our immune system. We have 70% of our immune system in our gut. Also, it can affect the brain barrier if it's 
produce too much, which can damage our brain. It can lead to um, brain fog and fatigue, all of those different things. So we, will wa we actually test specifically for cortisol, and I'll talk about that test in a few minutes. Um, hormones, we can also check for hormones, and if you're making the appropriate precursors for the hormones. Anemia, a lot of the um, autoimmune attacks or autoimmune conditions that we're gonna discuss um, can actually also have underlying problems with anemia. So if you don't have um, you know, the ability to, to make or to have enough iron or if you have a B12 deficiency, all of those different things can, can be a big problem, especially with chronic fatigue and um, thyroid disorders and rheumatoid and all of those different problems. Um, autoimmune attacks. This is the largest undiagnosed um, or generally undiagnosed or unrecognized thing our, our diagnosis, which it's called um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. There, it's an autoimmune attack against your thyroid. Generally, um, when you have your thyroid examined or checked, generally your doctor is only going to run several tests to examine your thyroid. Um, what we have found is that over 50% of people that have thyroid disorders in the U.S. actually have an autoimmune condition and we also do a specific test to determine if you have an autoimmune attack on your thyroid. And it's very important to determine that because it can also um, start attacking other tissues if it's not squelched or taken care of or, or helped to remediate. Um, brain imbalances. So all of these different common threads can occur and we actually run specific tests to determine if these are taking place with you to determine why you're experiencing this chronic fatigue, chronic, you know, these chronic conditions, um, thyroid imbalances, chronic fatigue, gut problems, to really get to the, the heart of the problem and also to, to check you neurologically to see if you have brain imbalances, oxygen deficiencies. And these things can manifest such a, for, for example, like with coordination, poor memory, you know, um, poor coordination, poor balance, all of those things can manifest as um, in that in that way so generally most of these chronic conditions are going to have a combination of causes uh, both you know metabolically and neurologically and we actually treat we 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 do the test to to assess you metabolically or how you're doing on a cellular level as well as a test to, to determine if you're functioning well neurologically and then we put together a plan to really correct this whole imbalance to allow your body to function at a, at a much more optimal level. Um, basically, if we're going to evaluate your thyroid though, um, and spe specifically, we're gonna wanna run several tests. Generally, when you go to a medical practitioner, um, basically what they need to know is if your thyroid is malfunctioning enough in order for you to be on medication. So basically, you have a symptom, we correct it with medication, and that is generally our medical approach to this condition. However, what we found is that what, what mostly is tested is TSH and T4. Now, in order to determine if you're actually uptaking enough of, the, of your thyroid hormone, there's, there's quite a few more tests that actually need to be run. Um, we actually need to look at the TSH the T4, the T3, the free levels of those hormones in your blood, as well as um, thyroid antibodies as well. So we've got TPO and TPG antibodies. This is extremely important because we need to determine if your body is actually producing antibodies against your thyroid. And again, if it is, um, whether or not you have hypo or hypothyroid is, is is an issue also, but basically we've got to determine if it's autoimmune. If you have an autoimmune condition, it can, you, that problem can not only, it, it won't get better purely just by using thyroid hormone. We actually have to look at all of the other factors that we discussed, such as your blood sugar, your adrenal gland function, your, your cortisol